As if an unprecedented drought in the Panama Canal wasn't enough, we're now running out of time to fix it. The canal must adapt to climate change or face the consequences, with El Nino threatening to make it worse. In today's video, we'll be covering all about the extreme weather grappling the canal, the 100-plus ships stuck at bottleneck, which is majorly affecting global trade, and the need to take strict measures in time to save the canal. Let's kick things off with how the drought has intensified over the past few months. In recent months, a major drought has affected a large portion of Central America, including Panama. But that's not all. The Panama Canal authorities have cautioned that the arrival of El Nino could worsen the situation. The tropical Pacific Ocean's El Nino, a natural phenomena, often results in warmer than average temperatures. It's predicted to raise global temperatures this year, possibly making 2023 or 2024 the highest year ever recorded. The result? Long lines and delays are preventing commercial ships from passing through the Panama Canal, as a drought in the Central American nation has reduced the amount of ships that can pass through one of the most vital trade routes in the world. The Panama Canal Authority, or the ACP, which controls the waterway, implemented restrictions on the number of vessels as a result of the drought. But it's not enough. An extended dry season has decreased the water supply needed for ships to pass through the canal, which has caused a backlog of ships waiting for their turn. Many shippers choose the canal because it typically lowers costs and transit times, particularly for large retailers and energy businesses that trade between China and the rest of Asia and the US. The ACP has stated that it is facing unprecedented challenges and that even when compared to the previous drought in 2019-2020, the severity of the current drought has no historical precedent. By the way, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any latest news. A severe lack of rainfall, a direct result of the looming threat of global warming, is at the heart of the Panama Canal crisis. The water levels of the lakes that feed the crucial locks of the Panama Canal have dropped from the lack of rain. One of these lakes, Lake Alajuela, is a stark illustration of the problem at hand. It is prominently located in the Colon region, some 50 kilometers north of Panama City. As it helps to keep the water levels required for the canal locks to operate effectively, Lake Alajuela is crucial to the operation of the Panama Canal. However, because of the long-lasting effects of global warming, Lake Alajuela's water levels have gradually dropped, posing a serious problem for the canal's operations. In order to send ships via a series of locks that act as water elevators and raise the ships up and over the continent between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, the canal depends on rainwater. So now, operators have been compelled to limit the number of vessels passing through, which will cause earnings to decline by $200 million in 2024. The drought had 154 ships trapped at the canal. Currently, there's a bottleneck of ships waiting in line to cross, and businesses are forced to look for alternate routes. The 50-mile byway moves about 6% of all maritime trade worldwide and is expected to generate $4.9 billion in income by the end of 2023. In the past, the Panama Canal, a marvel of modern engineering, connected the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. But the current circumstance reveals a reality that is remarkably different. It's a crucial passageway for transportation between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, assisting ships to avoid the trip around Cape Horn as they mainly transport goods from Asia to ports on the east coast of the United States. In fact, the United States constructed the canal between 1904 and 1914 and maintained complete control over the route across the Panamanian Isthmus until 1979. It was at the end of 1999 that the Panamanian government took complete ownership of the channel. Every year during the rainy season, which lasts from May to December, there are typically 90 ships in the area, but because of the blockage, live marine tracking websites showed about 140 vessels close to the canal. And that's still better, the number dropped after efforts were made to reduce the backlog. Otherwise, there were around 160 ships stuck there. 
Disruptions to crucial transportation routes are having a domino effect of consequences across businesses in the complex web of global trade and interconnected supply chains. As rainfall shortages in the fifth wettest country in the world draw attention to climate threats affecting the ocean shipping sector, which transports 80% of global trade. Maritime transportation experts worry that such incidents might become the new normal. Less cargo can be carried, different routes can add thousands of miles to the journey, or ship owners can battle the lines that earlier this month delayed 160 vessels and some ships by up to 21 days. Liking the video so far? Drop us a thumbs up! Due to the new restrictions set by the ACP, shipping costs between China and the US have already increased by up to 36%, despite rising sea temperatures that climate scientists fear might intensify extreme weather. Given that this waterway is a major channel for over 40% of container goods crossing the Americas, with a trade value of around $270 billion yearly, it's important to recognize the Panama Canal's significance in world trade, especially if we want to weigh the crisis's seriousness. The canal accelerates supply chains, broadens market access and stimulates trade dynamics, so the current traffic jams and lengthy delays have an impact on a wide range of global sectors. And yes, the importance of the Panama Canal goes beyond purely financial considerations. For instance, industry's efficient functioning is essential to meeting customer needs, maintaining production cycles and ensuring effective international trade. The current crisis is having an impact on many businesses, which is leading to interruptions that trickle down the supply chain. Industries that depend on fast delivery, from manufacturing to retail, face risks that can result in shortages, affect market stability and affect consumer pricing. The energy industry, which depends largely on the canal for the transportation of materials, is also susceptible to disruptions that could lead to changes in fuel prices. Also, the build-up of ships waiting for their turn to pass through the Panama Canal has started a chain reaction throughout the economy. As their ships wait in port for passage, shipping corporations suffer the brunt of rising prices. This financial cost filters down the supply chain, raising the risk of shortages and inflation, and adding to the financial stress already felt by companies attempting to recover from the pandemic. According to the ACP, the canal connects around 2,000 ports in 170 countries. The United States, China and Japan are the top source and destination nations. Plus, ships carrying more than 291 million long tons of cargo made more than 14,000 transits of the canal in 2022. Analysts worry about a repeat of 2022, when some larger vessels had to cut their loads in order to use the river. For the rest of the world, and especially for Europe, this is bad news. The Panama Canal Authority is constantly watching any climatic developments that might have an influence on the region's water availability and shipping through the vital waterway. Experts predict that the El Niño phenomenon will soon arrive, potentially causing the rainy season to begin earlier than usual in 2024 and worsening the ongoing water shortage in the Panama Canal watershed. By the way, that's already compelled the ACP to reduce the maximum number of ships passing through the waterway's expanded Neopanamax locks. In order to secure a sufficient water supply for ship transits along the interoceanic route, the ACP has put in place a number of water-saving techniques with the goal of raising Gatun Lake levels as a preventative measure. But sadly, the officials are aware that these steps might not be enough to entirely offset the financial effects of the water deficit. The predicament at the Panama Canal serves as a clear reminder of the difficulties that the infrastructure for international trade is facing as a result of environmental changes. To lessen the effects of such environmental changes on international trade, strategic planning and adaptive measures are required. It's unclear if these steps will be enough in the long run, but it's evident that the canal will require a lot of attention in the years to come, not just because of its significance in international trade, but also because of its vulnerability to climate change. So let us know in the comments below what you think about the Panama Canal drought affecting the global economy. We'll see you in the next video.